Hey everyone, this is Olivia Cheney, and today I have the awesome privilege of sitting down with Abby Houston, also known as Melodically Memorizing. So Abby, thank you so much for joining me. And since we are kind of short on time, let's just jump right in. Tell me what is Melodically Memorizing? Yes. Well, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Um, so Melodically Memorizing is, a, I don't know if you would call it a ministry. I, I've just started started it. Basically, it's an Instagram page where I post um, scripture passages and I put them to music for the sake of memorizing them. And if you're like me, like music is always like, we're always surrounded by music, right? And like, I mean, music is running through my brain all the time. So I was like, if I can replace even a portion of that music that I'm like, thinking about with scripture, how cool would that be, you know? And I will say your melodies are amazing because they do, they get stuck in your head. Yeah. But it's great because then when you're like, oh, what is that tune? And then you start to sing it, you're realizing that you're singing like First Corinthians or Matthew yeah. or something like that. And it's, it's awesome to do. Okay. So you started this in 2020 during mm-hmm. COVID. Yes which was, you know, an interesting time. And now you've gone for almost two years. You have just over 19,000 followers on this. Mm -hmm. And you've done how many melodies? Do you know? A little over 100. I'm not quite sure the exact number. Over 100. You've done two CDs. Mm -hmm. All right. So with all of that, my question is, what does it mean for you for melodically memorizing to be successful? In other words, how do you gauge Mm. success with melodically memorizing? Yeah, I think um, that's a great question. Like the numbers, like you see the numbers and that's exciting. When I started melodically memorizing, I was like literally just doing it for my own. Like I need accountability because scripture memory outside of this I have tried so many different ways and I'm so weak. Like I, it's just such a weak spiritual discipline for me. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to try to do this because my old youth pastor had done this. So I was like, well, I like music. I can kind of write music. So I'll try it. I'll go ahead and try it. So as I saw the community grow, I mean, that is exciting, but in and of itself, the numbers, like that doesn't necessarily for me, that's not how I gauge its success. Um, something so cool that like, I totally should have known this was going to happen, but I I didn't like piece it together until it started happening was that as I was making these melodies and consistently posting, like the word, every word of God is true and it is living and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And like, as I started meditating on God's word, it starts, it started changing my heart. And like, I noticed that I was being convicted of sin more. I was like meditating more on who God was, which in turn was like making me want to like love him more and know his word more. And so that, I I guess if you could call that success, like that's the Lord continuing to conform my like selfish heart to his image and like praise God for that. And so more than anything, it's like, it's the Lord working through that. And then it is exciting to see others join in on that because especially during COVID, it was like, wow, like we needed encouragement. We needed people to, um, be like digging into the word to know who God is and what truth is when truth was like, I mean, right now people are arguing that truth is relative and like, no, we know what truth is. We know that it is the word of God. And so, um, yeah, that's kind of like a very long winded answer, but yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. Cause one, I mean, I know we've talked about this before, but one of the things that you've said is 19,000 followers is awesome. But what that means, the way you see it is that's 19,000 people who are hungry for memorizing yeah. scripture. So it's yes. not just, I'm trying to hit this certain amount so that I could, you know, monetize my YouTube. It's yeah. no, these are people who are engaged in this and I think it is a ministry. I think I think you can call it that. This ministry so that they can be better equipped to know yeah. scripture and to rattle it off as mm-hmm. they do any song. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So you've done a few in Spanish. Mhm. Most of them are in English. Yes. Um what was the obviously, I mean, the ones in Spanish are very, very good too. What was the um, drive to not just do the songs in English? 
Yeah. Okay. Well, this is kind of a twofold answer. I, so my grandma, she got her master's in Spanish when she was like 40. And so I was homeschooled. And so she, um, taught myself along with my other siblings Spanish all throughout school. And it wasn't until I graduated, which is so sad that I was like, I love Spanish. Like I want to know Spanish really well. So all of those years of learning it, I could like comprehend and understand it a little bit. Um, but then I was like, you know, like, I don't know how, like the Lord has just given me a desire to really learn the language and to know it. So I'm like, well, if he's given me that desire, I don't know how he will use it, but I would love to know scripture in Spanish so that if the case were to come or the situation were to arise that I need to witness to someone in Spanish, um, then I could be more equipped. Um, so that being said, I think I only have like three or four passages in Spanish right now, but I was like, this will start giving me words for like what is repentance in Spanish? Like all those different little words. Like I have no idea. You know, I know how to say like fish, not repentance. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then also just to encourage other believers who either speak Spanish and English or some who don't speak any English. I thought this would be a good way to let them know, Hey, we can, we can memorize scripture together. I have one lady who often will mem uh, message me, um, her renditions of verses, not using my melodies, but she's, been inspired by what I'm doing and she will take verses and she'll do it in German, I believe. Um, and oh, wow. she'll like sing in German and so she'll send them to me and I'm like, this is so, I have no idea what you're saying, but it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool to see this play out because we're witnessing the idea of every tribe, every tongue, every language, you know? Yes, so exactly. that's awesome to see. What do you hope melodically memorizing looks like a year from now you've done it for almost two years so mm -hmm. obviously I guess your answer probably in 2020 maybe it would be a little different <laughs> what yeah. it is now but if you can think okay we're looking at 2023 wow. what does melodically memorizing look like in that time yeah that's a great question so I would love to continue like a year from now I'd love to say that I will have been consistent in weekly posting, like just again, for the sake of knowing God's word more, knowing him more through his word weekly and memorizing scripture and applying it. Um, I have a church actually in Virginia that I'm going to be, um, they're commissioning me to write melodies for the verses that they're like a sermon series that they're going to be going through almost all year. And so, um, I'm going to fly out to Virginia in April and visit them and, um, and then I'll be doing that for them. So I will be doing basically what I do for melodically memorizing, except I'm letting them use the melodies for congregational worship. Um, and so I would love to be able to see other congregations using the, the melodies, if that is something that they could use, if their congregation is very musical, like I would love to give like these melodies as resources. So that means like getting chord sheets ready and all these like small little things that like I'm working on slowly, but surely like it's coming, it's coming. And, um, yeah, so I guess just continued growth in that and, um, possible, I'm possibly thinking of maybe again, if other churches have events, you know, maybe going and, um, and seeing at those events, but otherwise the biggest goal is just to be consistent and just to continue to learn and know God's word and apply it for the sake of knowing him more. I think that's a great goal and vision for this because I can totally see what you've done turning into that pretty easily. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, one of the things that's kind of, a, maybe not a debate, maybe that might be too strong of a word right now, um, but a, to a topic of conversation in churches is around the music. Mm -hmm. What do we do for worship times? Do we like just stick with hymns? Do we do contemporary stuff, which contemporary songs mm -hmm. should we do? So I think since what you're singing is literally just scripture, I mean, it's like the ESV of the Bible. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, you know, pretty well that this is good, consistent lyrics and it's true. So there's not that worry, I guess, for yeah. the congregation or for the pastor, whoever, um, to sing those. So yeah, I can definitely see that happening in the future. So yeah, is there, you've done a lot 
of books of the Bible, a lot of passages, you've done over a hundred. Um, is there a passage that you haven't been able to find the melody for yet, but you're like, at some point, this is one that I want people to know and memorize? Yes. Okay. Actually, I can think of one like right off the bat, the armor of God. I have had the hardest time putting that with the music. I have a, so I keep a folder on my phone of songs that I will, I've recorded and like I have titled it like mem- melodically memorizing in progress or some of them that are done and I just have to memorize them. That's another goal. I just try to memorize, like I don't look at the music or the, the verses while I'm singing them. Like I want to know them before I post them. Um, so anyways, I'll, I'll like listen to them in the car when I'm driving. And every time I come to the melody for the armor of God, I'm like, I just don't like it. Like, I don't think it fits. So that is one that like, I just cannot seem to get the melody for. But, um, yeah, it is one that I want people to know. I want to know myself, like to take up the shield of faith, the belt of truth, like the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, such important. Oh, that's so important. And I just have not gotten the melody for it yet. It's elusive. It's the elusive (laughs) one, man. Yeah, that, that would be a great one to know. Okay. Of the ones that you have done then, what was one, obviously it's all scripture. It's all great, but it was there one that you were just really proud of how it turned out of how the melody Mm. worked with the words. Is there one that Mm -hmm. you're just like, yeah, that one was really good. Mm, yeah okay um there have been a couple one really fun one I liked was um second Peter 1 15 15 I think um where um that one's like a jazzy kind of feel to it and that was really fun um that's like very different than what I've written before too so like that was like kind of unexpected I was like oh I like this yeah <laughs> and then um I really liked Isaiah 9, 6, where it uh, talks about um, Jesus being the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. And that one was just really, I, I find myself meditating on that a lot, like remembering that, remembering who God is, recalling his character. I was really thankful too for how like the melody slipped or the words slipped into that melody really well. Mm, that's awesome. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about process. Okay. So Obviously, you know which verses that you want to do. Is it that you have a melody in your head and you think, oh, this verse will match that? Or do you find the verse first and just try to focus on what melody would fit that? Which way do you go? Yeah. So sometimes it's very rare with with the melodically memorizing. It's very rare that I have a melody then I try to fit the, the passage in. It's more of truly, I will sit down at the piano and I will open up my Bible or open up to a passage of like, okay, this is the passage that I really want to work on. And then I'll just kind of like tinker around and see like what works, what doesn't. You kind of also, what I have been doing, I guess, is looking at the passage and if it's talking about sin, I'm not just going to be like, like, it's going to be like more of a, like, you're going to hit the minor chords. Exactly. Yes. But if it's like Psalm 1611 was one of the first ones that I did. Um, it says, you make known to me the paths of life in your presence. There are fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And that one, it's like, okay, that's not going to be one that's in a minor chord. Like you're going to make that sound happy. That's going to be joyful. It's going to be more peppy. So those are some kind of guidelines that I use. Like I look at the passage, kind of meditate on it for a while. What does, what is it saying? What is it trying to convey? And not trying to manipulate emotions, but trying to convey what is the passage saying? And how can we then like, as I'm listening to it and singing it, like how can I communicate the severity of this passage with the melody? Um, So yeah, then from there, I just kind of tinker around and see what would fit best. Have you done every New Testament book? No, I've not. I think I have okay. the first and second Thessalonians, maybe second Thessalonians I've not done. Um, so there's a couple in there that I've not done. Is that bucket list that you're going to do every something for yes. every book? And then yes, in the Old Testament too? Yeah. So yeah, that would be a goal is to to eventually do something from every single book of the Bible. Obviously, there are some that, again, like, like Leviticus, I know people joke around about that, it, but it, it still is God's word. However, there are not going to be probably as many that I'm going to do from Leviticus as right. I would John. Like I have tons of passages from John or from Psalms. Romans. Um, Psalms, yeah. exactly. Like Psalms is made for singing. So there's going to be differences, but eventually I'd like to have something from each book. So you're at 19,000 followers, just over that now. 
-hmm. you have a challenge that you have put out. Do you want to talk about that? Yes. So if I get up to 20,000 followers, uh, once I, or once I reach that, then there will be a giveaway. So I'm not going to say what the prize is. I'm not going to say, but once we get there, there will be a really fun giveaway and I'm really excited. So I put that challenge out there and I'm like, you guys, we got to get there. So we're at 19.1 so far. Okay. So we got to go knock on some doors, call <laughs> our friends, tell our Just, grandmas to get on Instagram so exactly. they can follow the account. All yes. right. Yeah. We'll get the word out. Hopefully yeah. this will help. <laughs> If somebody was like, wow, I love melodically memorizing. This is awesome. I want to interview Abby. How do I get in touch with her? What would you say? Yes. What's the, how do we get in touch with you? So probably the easiest way would be to email me. Um, it's melodically memorizing at gmail.com. Or you can DM me on Instagram if you have an Instagram that I'm also like super active on there. So you could uh, DM me. And those two would probably be the easiest ways. And I see those the most often. For anyone who doesn't have Instagram or doesn't like YouTube for whatever reason, um, you yeah. can buy a CD. Yeah. And how do they DM do that? DM me too. DM so you. you. Could, there's two ways. You could either DM me or there is a Google form that you can fill out and then I will get that and I'll ship one to you. You have volume two. Will mm -hmm. there be at some point in the future volume three? Yes. That's my goal. Yep. I don't even know when I will stop. I just, my goal is to get all of them on, on, at least on Spotify. Like that's, that's the goal there. Okay. Hopefully all of them will be on physical CDs at some point, but again, price point is right. a thing to factor in. So at least Spotify. Right. And so right now the two CDs, all of those songs are available on Spotify. If you want yep. all of the, um, melodies, you have to go to Instagram. Exactly. Instagram or YouTube. They're all on YouTube as well. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Now, if there's anywhere that do you want to direct people either to melodically memorizing or also like your personal stuff, because I know you do a lot of other cool things. So if you want to direct people to wherever so that they can follow you. Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, that's just at melodically memorizing um, YouTube and Facebook. It's the same. So you can look melodically memorizing up and then I'll be right there. And then if you want to follow me on my personal page, it's at joyfully.abby. Okay. And then now what she's not telling you is that she also has music that she has personally done oh, yeah. that is separate from melodically memorizing. She has an EP out called Lord, We Need You mm -hmm. um, with that uh, title track. And then I think two or three other songs. Yep. Two others. Okay. And so we can just look you up as Abby Houston on yes. Spotify or wherever. Exactly. Listen to that as well. Very talented and you're doing awesome things. And I would call these things ministry because Praise you have a Lord. great heart for the Lord and you're very passionate about sharing that with others through music um, and also very encouraging posts. So I encourage everyone to go follow at joyfully.abby and at melodically memorizing. Abby, thanks so much. Thank you for you. having me. You too. Appreciate it.